This is Wells Tech, a weekly show exploring the intersections of technology and ministry. Your hosts are Sally Draper and Martin Spriggs. Wells Tech is produced by Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Welcome back to Wells Tech, everybody. This is episode 511, 511, recorded on Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017. My name, Martin Spriggs, and this is a show about technology and ministry. And this is a show that I do with my faithful podcasting partner, Sally Draper. Hey, Sally. Hey, Martin, I'm coming to you from New Ulm, Minnesota, and we're just 24 hours too late for a very historic event. Look at you. Got yep. the glasses and everything. Yep. That's, uh, there. if you're just listening at home, they're kind of propped on top of my head. And that's kind of where they stayed all yesterday, because here <laughs> in uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin, we had pretty cloudy skies, so it wasn't much of a show. We're talking about the solar eclipse, of course, that mm -hmm. happened on uh, August 21st. Uh, maximum time span around here, or peak, or whatever they called it, was 1.04 p.m. And that was the moment that the clouds burst forward with massive rainstorms <laughs> in New Orleans. So Timing was perfect. Right. No sunshine for us, but it did get very dark. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously cloud cover was all day That's long. It got do significantly that. Dark, darker at this time. And the street lights came on and everything. But that was about my full eclipse experience. We were ready. Our whole team had uh, the glasses. And I'm not going to throw these away if I can, uh, if I live long enough. Uh, there's one in the uh, <laughs> next decade that we can, you know, take our chances with. But, uh, We'll see. Um, these are commemorative because they've got the date and everything. But uh, I guess some people, probably some of our audience, uh, was able probably to see the eclipse. Uh, kind of a Actually, neat thing that God does for us once in a while. Yeah, I know people that travel to Nebraska, Tennessee, right in line of the, the most blackout that occurred. Mm -hmm and saw lots of pictures online and things like that. Uh, my niece had a really uh, neat experience. I'll have to dig out this picture and show you guys, but apparently she has an older shed in her backyard and it has little pinholes in the ceiling. So mm -hmm. little rays of sun come through normally. And she has a picture of herself laying down with the, with like a moon shape on her forehead, a ray of sun that with the solar eclipse happening. It was a really cool picture. So. Wow. Very creative. Yeah. Too. Her shed was a, a pinhole <laughs> in a large scale. So, well, I remember in '79 where we had uh, an event. I was just uh, graduating from high school, I think, and uh, and that was pretty cool. I remember it getting dark then as well. But uh, these events don't come along too often. So, all right. Well, ne maybe next time. We'll We're not the to... biggest news of the week, Martin, but we do have a Wells Tech podcast, and it's full of excitement as well. Yep. Throwing, not going to throw any shade on our podcast. Oh, boy. Uh, we'll be in full sunlight but, because... Um... We're talking about ministry resources, and that is always a bright and shiny topic because we've been doing it all summer, and uh, hopefully our audience has been grabbing a few of these and taking advantage of some of the things that we've been sharing. Uh, we write up a little blog post. We sometimes do a little video, but basically our show is focused on a ministry resource, and this show is no different. So we only have a few shows left for the summer before we jump back into our regular routine. So Sally is at the plate today with her ministry resource. What, have you, what did you bring for us today, Sally? Well, today I have an article uh, loaded full of great links, and it's all about digital signage with Google tools. So, um, and I guess right off the bat, I'll make full disclaimer that I don't have a digital sign in my office here in uh, my home in New Ulm, Minnesota. But I do know that a lot of churches and schools take advantage of these, and I know it's been a topic of discussion um, yeah, on well, could, our Wells you Tech. Could do it. You could do something. I mean, maybe a little signage for Kevin, what's yeah. on the menu for dinner. No, I think there's a lot list. of application for you in the Draper household. It's, You've done other things that probably are in the same category, you know. 
Yeah, I, you know, I think it would make a big, a great background for me here as we're recording as well. That's so exactly right. Exactly right. So ideas are, are forming as we speak, but <laughs> um, schools and churches probably more predominantly Absolutely. would have almost a requirement now. Yeah. And, you know, we've all got announcements to share and why not do it using the digital tools available to us? And I'll just start out by saying hats off to Josh Shanick and many others who have shared um, their configurations in their schools and churches. I had um, teacher Bill Otto approach me at Senate Convention. That's what really gave me the idea for this um, post because he was ready to get into the digital signage space and was looking for some advice on that. So um, having looked back at those previous discussions and also talked with you, Martin, because you're making use of digital signage there at the Center for Mission and Ministry, uh, I just put together a little uh, blog post. And you know, obviously there are many ways you could carry this out. Mm -hmm. um, people probably have a lot of existing hardware and software and things like that. And probably there's ways to make it work um, with some of your existing equipment and things. What I focused on on this post was if you wanted to go the Google route, and particularly if you're a Google Apps domain, um, you can manage a Google device um, that's new on the market, something called a Chrome bit, and do that in your Google Apps administration area and use a web plugin that Google makes available called uh, Chrome Sign Builder. And between all of that and mixing in perhaps a Google Slideshow in the mix, you can have a very dynamic uh, digital sign. And actually in my blog post, I have a picture that Josh was uh, willing to share from Kettle. Just share my screen really quick for those watching. Um, and it's a picture of their digital sign at Kettle. And the thing about it is you can have logo, you can have time, um, perhaps the weather showing on the digital sign and then announcement areas. And that can even be broken up into different spaces as well. And um, everyone on your staff doesn't have to have uh, access to your admin panel or anything like that, they can control the sign just by updating a Google slideshow, which is pretty simple for most people. I, I really liked what Josh said. Um, they have a Google slideshow that's set to run slides for 10 seconds at a time and to refresh every one minute. And so it gets to six slides basically, but their Google slideshow may have 40 or 50 slides in it that they slide in and out of those first slick six spots in the slideshow. Um, they're working on it behind the scenes, developing new slides or whatever. And then as they need to slot things in, they can do that very easily by just rearranging the slides in their slideshow. So mm -hmm. lots of options there. And um, on top of all of that great advice and links to all those different things, um, I found a really good YouTube video and it's about a 30 minute webinar uh, done by a group called Cloud Bakers. They're based in Chicago and just um, had a, an excellent tutorial on how to set all of this up. They actually show the Google admin area and walk through setting up the Chrome bit as a kiosk computer that automatically comes up and runs what's on it, that kind of thing. So all of that is in my blog post, my ministry resource for the week. Yeah, Sally, as you mentioned, uh, we have sign digital signage. We have actually four monitors here at the CMM. And about earlier this year, uh, probably the start of summer, maybe even late spring, our renewal was up. When we first moved into the new building three years ago, we had kind of professional AV firm come in, set up the monitors, set up the um, the signage itself, the the software, the server, etc. And so we were kind of up against like a three thousand dollar expense every other year, or something like that. And we thought, boy, there's got to be a way to do this a lot cheaper. So I kind of went on a quest. I watched the video that you uh, referenced there in your blog post and thought, hey, we could do this with Chromebooks bits, which are pretty inexpensive. We, I had one around um, from a while back and we have a Chrome box and uh, just kind of using that system versus the kind of complicated setup we had before was very cost effective. One thing that we did a little bit differently than what's in that video and what you talk about in your blog post is we used a uh, service, and this is based on Josh Shanick's recommendation again, called Rise Vision. And uh, that's something that congregations could and schools could uh, 
could potentially use as well. Uh, it is there is a free version of it, and uh, for many that free version would work really well. I think that's what Josh uses, um, and it works with the uh, the, the G Suite uh, model as well. Although we use a little bit different approach, but anyway, uh, it's called Rise Vision, RiseVision.com. And you can get started for free. When you start getting into maybe some of the widgets, uh, I'm showing on the screen if you're watching at home how we've got our screen set up. This is kind of the configuration. It, it works like a PowerPoint. You have little zones that you can put content in. Uh, we have a slideshow going, and then there's a, a weather widget that we actually did purchase. So that costs us maybe three or four bucks a month to do that. And then when it's all said and done, uh, kind of looks like this. So what I'm showing, if you're watching, is really what's playing on our monitor at this very moment. Monitors, we have three screens that show uh, the same thing. And uh, down the left, we have a calendar. So what rooms are reserved, who's meeting in them. We have a time, we have the weather widget, we have just some interesting FAQs, and then we have a slideshow going. So our designer, Bree, uh, put this all together. And then our receptionist, Sharon Fondries, puts... Uh, the calendar together and updates it each week. So it's kind of a slick system and very, very low cost for us. So I think this was a, a good choice for us. And it gives us almost exactly what we had before with the, with the much uh, higher cost solution. So the price of a flat panel display, um, you know, a Chrome bit, and a little bit of software and uh, your church or school could be pretty well set and very easy because you can control it all remotely. You don't have to plug in um, you know, thumb drives into the TV or get a ladder or whatever. This can all be remote. It can all be calendared, so it's all timed. So you can work ahead, you know, however many weeks or days or times of days that you want. Uh, it's all it's all very uh, very easy to put together. I think very low cost and lo lo very few barriers to entry. Excellent. Um, makes me uh, want to be at the CMM and see those nice signs. How many of them do you have in the building? We have three and then actually just this summer, later this summer, uh, our uh, church extension fund group wanted to put up their own sign with rates, interest rates for loans. Uh, so if you uh, nice. Uh, invest your money with CEF, um, you get a uh, rate of return and they post that. And so that's in our entryway as well. And we did it kind of the same way. They have obviously a different display, but it works exactly the same way. So it's a scalable solution. I think you mentioned that in the blog post or it's in that video too, that if you've got different areas on campus where you want different screens, you can put them in different zones and they can be on their own schedule, different slideshows, uh, very slick setup. Yeah, actually reminded me that they, they show an example of a restaurant and right. having the morning menu, the lunchtime menu, and the dinner time menu. Reminded me of Burger King. Have you been in Burger King lately? Where they're all the digital, Donalds, yeah, I think. yeah. Mm -hmm. And their 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 signs are changing and featuring different burger pictures and all kinds of stuff. So fun to watch. <laughs> keeps me entertained but yeah they talked also about regional things and i thought about some of our our churches that have multiple campuses that you mm -hmm. can be in the one place and control what's being projected in in multiple locations and things yeah. like that you can have live video youtube videos um you know all kinds of options there too if you wanted to have audio or or whatever so it's pretty slick so right. if any of you are watching and doing uh, screens and want to share your experience, we'd love to hear from you and hear uh, the pluses and minuses. I think um, it's it's growing and if you've run into some stumbling blocks or or tackled a problem and, and resolved it and had great results, we'd love to hear from you. Very good. Thanks for putting that together, Sally. Um, we're going to move on to the next segment of the show and that is our picks of the week. Picks of the week, and I think I'm up first. And um, I am actually sharing something from my home congregation, just because I think they've done a really great job with this. We're in the middle of a capital campaign, a fundraising campaign, to finance uh, an improvement in the school. So we want to expand St. Paul's School and and do some improvements, some remodeling there. And they're actually sending <laughs> a teacher and a pastor up to the roof. Now this kind of struck a chord with me because it was uh, not that long ago within the Your last five or six up years roof, I remember, that yes. uh, my husband spent the night on a roof and they're doing something similar. Um, but 
it, it's just so much fun. They've added so much to it. They planned it for a weekend uh, when there's a big fireworks display around Herman Monument. They have a Herman Fest every every fall. So that'll be early in September. So our parking lot at our school is the perfect place to watch that. It's right at the full foot of the hill. And so they typically get a lot of traffic at the school, people wanting to park there and watch the fireworks and sit on our grounds and things like that. So they're going to do a fun festival kind of thing at the school that afternoon um, and evening leading up to the fireworks. And then um, they actually are going to send the, like I said, um, Pastor Scharf and Mr. Cresson, pastor and, and teacher from the school up to the roof, but they have drawings for people to um, go up to the roof with them. They have um, fundraising leading up to it. And depending on how much is raised, they um, actually for the first thousand dollars, they got sleeping bags to make their stay on the roof better. Um, then they got pillows at two thousand dollars, cots at three thousand dollars and umbrellas in case it rains um, when they reach the four thousand dollar giving point. And it'll continue as long as the giving goes up up to ten thousand dollars. They'll get additional amenities, things like snacks and and um, maybe a TV up there. I don't know what all they're going to have, but um, they did a really fun video to promote it. And I just know, you know, you can take a step back and think there's a communication team behind this and a web team and a, you know, they've, they've put thought into this capital um, event, capital fundraising event and done a really good job with promoting it, um, sharing the information, getting it out in the different social media channels and um, kind of getting some enthusiasm behind this event. And I just thought uh, others might want to read the page and watch the video and get some ideas. They have a logo specific to it, um, teams around it, around a beanbag tournament, uh, all kinds of fun stuff happening. So check it out on the St. Paul's uh, Church and School website. And let us know if you've done something similar or have different other examples to share along these lines. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel if somebody's got a good program together and a good outline to follow? Even if you don't go step by step, it's going to give you great ideas and uh, learn sure. from them. Sure, absolutely. Sure. Cool. Um, my pick of the week would be next. And um, those of you watching at home, I'll do a quick screen share for that as well. Um, and I've mentioned this in a previous, so I, I made an allusions to it in previous blog posts, but uh, my pick is Team Drives from Google. Um, I'm going to share a uh, G Suite Learning Center uh, article, which kind of walks you through what Team Drives are. But just by, for, for demonstration purposes, if you have a G Suite account, so Google uh, for nonprofits, Google for education, uh, I think these are available to you. Uh, for free. And this solves kind of an age old problem uh, that I believe Google has had. And that is the fact that uh, every document needs an owner, one owner, uh, which becomes a problem when you have keep people moving in and out of teams, etc. You don't have things like uh, uh, Dropbox might have or OneDrive where you've got this community owned uh, drive space. But now with team drives, that's exactly what you get. So I've created one, uh, a couple recently, one for our technology committee at church and also for our website committee where these are um, drive spaces, just like Google Drive, that have uh, team ownership or really are kind of owned by the site. Now you can have people join uh, the site and or you can give people access to the site. So for instance, our Peace website committee has six members. I can add members, I can subtract members, and they can have different permissions within the site. Some can be read only, some can be edit, some you can have more than one owner, for instance. Uh, of all the content and that gives them the ability to add and remove other members and so on and so forth. So this really solves a big problem uh, for, I think a lot of organizations that don't like the Google, the, the out of the box, my drive or Google drive model where everybody's got an, uh, every file has to have an owner, then you need to share that out and et cetera, et cetera. I think team drives make a lot of sense. Now there are a couple of caveats that I'll mention about team drives that make them a little bit different than Google Drive. One of them 
is that you um, you can't use Google Takeout, and Takeout is a way to um, get all your stuff off the or get a copy of all your stuff, kind of as a backup. So you can use Google Takeout to get all of your stuff off your own drive um, and send that down to your local hard drive for backup purposes. Um, and that's a wonderful tool, and maybe that's uh, worth another blog post even on that. But uh, I think uh, that's a negative, uh, so you have to be aware of that. And the other negative is you can't do any kind of local syncing. Um, so like you can with Google Drive, you can sync copies of certain folders down to your hard drive. Uh, you can't do that with team drives. Now, I think I would imagine that that is somewhere in the future, maybe even Google Takeout, Takeout as well, although I haven't gotten any real confirmation from Google about either one of those. But I would think for these to be um, you know, useful, you know, even more useful, those two things need to be added. But if uh, this fits your need and you're kind of, uh, you've kind of been struggling with this whole uh, Google Drive paradigm of one file one you one owner i think this might be something for for you to try so uh give it a shot and see if it works for your organization i found it to be really helpful and a lot easier for people to understand how it works you just go to the one site it just appears in your menu and uh that's all there is to it you can upload download edit just like anything else so it's pretty cool i solved that with a group i was involved with in a very unsecure way so it's nice to see it there we have google apps but um i i don't have a real tech savvy group and so yeah. i gave them a link that was editable without long, logging in to a folder mm. and then under that folder put all our documents and that's very very unsafe to do because anybody with that link could make edits but um yeah. I like that they finally addressed that and that we can get something um, more solid and, le and secure than the solution I came up yep. with. So, so good something stuff. to consider. Mm -hmm. All right, that'll wrap up our picks of the week. We do have a little bit of community feedback, Sally. Yep, a little chatter over on the Wells Tech um, Google group. And if you aren't a part of that, you're certainly welcome to join. It's a place where you can send an email to many of your close tech friends with just one quick email and get responses to questions you have. And that's just what Drew Willems did. Uh, Drew is the STEM Academy director at Lakeside Lutheran High School. But this was a church question he was asking. He said he's looking to schedule 600 church family visits between four different pastors, looking for best practices on scheduling and calendar tracking. Google Calendar comes to mind, but he wanted to consider other options as well. And from Nate Livingston, living, yeah, Livingston, who is at uh, the principal at St. John's in Caledonia, Minnesota, he recommended a soft, uh, a website, I should say, called ptcfast.com. Stands for Parent Teacher Conference Fast. Um, and it's a free scheduler, an online scheduler. It says over 2 million conference app appointments made online. And uh, Nate said it works great for them, but they are dealing with 45 families, not 600. Uh, they can send links out. Parents can see what slots are open and sign up for an open one, that kind of thing. So um, even if it's not the church solution Drew was looking for, some of your teachers may want to note that uh, web address, PTC Fast dot com for um, parent teacher conferences at least and then a separate response from Stephen Lockwood who's um, recommending that you look at a website it's a Captera website that uh, basically is cataloged appointment scheduling software so let me do a quick screen share for those watching the video um, it's part of captera.com and it's um, got all kinds, it says 172 different appointment scheduling software solutions and they're ranked um, by a five star rating and you can filter the results down to just web based or um, the number of users like Drew could put in 500 to 999 if that's how many he's expecting. Um, filter it by different things it might do like group scheduling, meeting room booking, 
um, payment processing, reservations, all kinds of things, and then come up with some um, options to consider. I'm guessing many listed may be fee-based, not free, um, but if it fits your need, it may be worth the price. So um, great list that uh, was shared there. So definitely check that out. There was, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it was just, just it did a quick search while you were talking, Sally. Uh, one that I found was you can book dot me. Uh, but I don't think that's the one I'm thinking of, but this one actually looks pretty decent. 10, 10, like you mentioned, some of these are going to cost some money, $10 per calendar per month. Uh, but if you're kind of in this seasonal thing where you're trying to schedule stuff, maybe that's worth it. Uh, this looks actually pretty cool. I thought there was something that would work right with your Google calendar where you would block out your calendar with available spots and then publish that. And then I think this was in the context of parent teacher, um, scheduling where par parents could come in, see the teacher's schedule and pick one of the available spots. I think I've even used it myself. I just don't remember what it is. We'll have to maybe research Actually, that. Actually, I, I think we... what you're describing is just a feature of Google Calendar called appointment slots. Maybe so. Maybe it was yeah. brought in even though. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought it was a third party, but I could be wrong. So. So, um, and and maybe Drew had looked at that as well. He did say he was thinking of Google Calendar, but that's something to right. check out. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Um, so if you'd like to contribute to the show like Drew did uh, through our Google groups, you could do it that way. You could come to our show notes page, which is wellstech.wells.net. Uh, you could send us an email, wellstech at wells.net. But uh, once you go to that show notes page, you're going to see all kinds of different uh, options for you to connect with us, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. Um, the list goes on and on. So just take advantage of that. We'd like for you to join the conversation. Sally, do we have a featured video this week? Uh, not just one video, but a whole host of them, Martin, because it is back to school time, mm -hmm. at least on the campus of Martin Luther College. And I just wanted to remind people that they have daily um, chapel services, evening chapel and compline at time zone. Uh, weekly on Mondays. And you can get to all of that at mlc-wells.edu slash streams. Um, I just happened to look up the opening service, which happened yesterday. Very special service. There were lots of uh, new professors installed, including our very own Rachel Feld, who is replacing Dr. Jim Grunwall and is now the um, campus technology um, academic computing coordinator, I believe is the title, and teaching technology on campus. So congratulations, Professor Feld, and all those other newbies at Martin Luther College. We wish you the best on your new school year. And you can watch yeah. that worship um, right there on the Wells Tech page as we will have that embedded. Cool. I'm going to have to get used to that Professor Feld yeah. business. <laughs> yep. That's pretty neat. Congratulations, Rachel. And blessings on all the students and faculty at MLC, another school year. That's awesome. Um, well, Sally, I think that's going to about do it for this week. I'll be up next week. Uh, and I think maybe that's probably our last week of ministry resources. And uh, I'm going to pull out all the stops. Well, not really. Can't but, wait. Uh, I thought maybe I would share... Um, some of my techniques and some of the things I've found to be really helpful when I go on the road for presentations. So uh, I kind of have a portable presentation toolkit that I use, uh, kind of trying to figure out or be um, doubly prepared for any situation I might run into, whether that's a uh, uh, projector or projector list, whether I need audio, internet, all those things that if you do any kind of presenting offsite, and maybe sometimes even in your own backyard, it's good to have these little toolkits available so that you don't have to worry about the technology. You can just worry about the presentation itself. So that's going to be my ministry resource next week. So tune in for that. Excellent. Sally, I think that's going to do it. Um, I will see everybody and Sally will see everybody next week for episode 512. Blessings on your week. See you next week. Bye-bye.